and, and even just listening to the um, Sunday school lesson and the story of Ezekiel, God honored Ezekiel obedience. Ezekiel didn't try to analyze, redo, rethink nothing. But because of what God told him to do, he did it and God showed up mightily. And we have to, you know, settle within ourselves that no matter what, if I'm going down, I'm going down on the word of God. So the word of God is not going to fail me, but you have to make a decision like how we used to do when we were kids, draw a line in the sand and say, I dare you to come across this line. You have to, you know, make a solid commitment and decision within yourself that no matter what comes, no matter what goes, I'm going to stick with God and I'm going to stand on his word. I'm going to read these verses and then that, that's going to be it. And we're going to go into um, worship on this morning. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses, starting at verse 17, and I'm reading in the New King James Lady Version. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stall, yet I will rejoice in the God, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer feet, and he will make me walk on the high hills. Yes. And that's where I believe God is taking us. Even though things may look like they're flourishing, and then again, things may look like they're withering away. You don't have to fear. You don't have to worry. Because if your heart safely trusts God, even though they may say it's a shortage, okay, so what? But my God, Philippians 419, shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Because if, if you've been faithful handling the business of God, taking care of God's business, God's going to take care of your business. If you've been acknowledging God in all your ways, hey, he's going to take care of you. He's going to undergird you. He's going to support you. He's going to sustain you. And then, I love the 19th verse said, he will make my feet like deer feet. You know how a deer walk? A deer has a hind feet and they walking. You're going to walk above the circumstances and the situation that seems to try to overtake you. No, you're going to be walking above them because God is your refuge. He's your fortress. He's your salvation. And he will take care of us. He's our sustainer. So let not your heart be troubled. Amen? Amen. That's my scripture for today. Habakkuk 3, 17 through 19. You got to know who your faith is and who you trust and your belief is in. Amen. Amen. At this time, at this time, <laughs> we're going to open up with praise and worship. Amen. Amen. Are you excited about being here today? Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice. We're going to be glad in it. Because David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And it's another day that the Lord has kept us. Yes. Kept our minds, stayed on him, kept us from all evil. Because even in our sleep, the enemy could have taken us out. Yes. You know, could have caused anything to happen. But I'm so glad that the blood of Jesus prevails. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And he's still on the throne. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will
and to see and to experience. Amen. Matthew, Matthew chapter number four, beginning at verse number 23 through verse number, well, let me go through verse number 25. And he went, I'm reading from the ESV version of the Bible. And he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria. And they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various disease and pains, those oppressed by demons, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them all. And great multitude or great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis and from Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. I want to read verse number 25 again. And great crowds or multitudes followed him from Galilee and Decapolis and from Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. I want to use for a thought this morning, kingdom expansion. Kingdom expansion or expanding the kingdom. Uh, when we speak of kingdom uh, in the Western Hemisphere, uh, we have, I think to some degree, we don't have a full understanding of uh, what it means to live in a kingdom, or to have a king to rule and to reign over you. Um, we sometimes want to equate uh, a king with a president. Uh, we want to equate, amen, a kingdom uh, with uh, an American um, idea, but uh, a democracy. But in a kingdom, there has to be a king. Uh, there has to be a king that's seated at the pinnacle of that nation or that group of people, amen. Uh, and that king has ultimate authority over every other level, levels of government in that kingdom. The king has the final say. Um, in our Western Hemisphere or in our Western civilization, um, you know, we're not accustomed to having a king to rule over us. We believe in the democratic process, the majority rules. Amen. But in a kingdom, that's not necessarily the case. In a kingdom, amen, uh, the, the, the citizens of that kingdom, they are subject to the demands of the king. Whatever the king commands, uh, those that are citizens of that kingdom, they are subject, amen, to that king's uh, commandments. Amen. They are subject to that king's dominion. Uh, so I want to talk this morning about uh, expansion, kingdom expansion. Uh, we know that the word expansion means to enlarge Amen. It means to advance. It means to grow. Amen. It means, amen, that uh, the kingdom, amen, is taking territory. As a matter of fact, it's not only taking uh, territory, but what's happening is every other level of government or authority that was in that uh, region or in that place prior, amen, to the kingdom that just arrived, Every other authority, praise God, it now comes under the authority of the ruling kingdom or the ruling king. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. So when we look at uh, kingdom authority, kingdom dominion, amen, it means that word dominion, it means to have uh, ultimate power. It means to have ultimate control. That's what we get our word uh, uh, to dominate. Amen. The king, when he's in authority, when he's in power, amen, he has the power to dominate, to rule and control, amen. So this morning, uh, 
And, and yesterday and earlier this week, as I was looking at uh, what I wanted to talk about this morning, I want us to look at this, amen, uh, expansion of the kingdom. I want us to look at it, amen, as when Jesus first was being introduced, amen, uh, on the scene. Uh, we look at, uh, I think it's in verse number uh Well, John was preaching first. John was preaching, uh, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was the message that the, that the uh, that John the Baptist was preaching, amen, before Jesus came on the scene. John was preaching a message of repentance, meaning, amen, in order for you to be a part or to take part, Amen. To become a citizen of this kingdom, amen. You first have to, what? Well, you first have to repent, amen. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, or the kingdom of heaven is near. So now we see, amen, that Jesus followed up the message of John with the same, amen, uh, repetition of speaking, amen, with the same proclamation, amen. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. In order, glory be to God, in order for the kingdom to expand. Amen. There has to be a proclamation. Amen. The citizen of an area or a, a certain uh, uh, region, amen, they have to know, amen, that another kingdom is on the horizon. Amen. Another kingdom, amen, is arising, amen, and therefore, amen, the prior, amen, the prior administration, if you will, or the prior kingship, or the prior order of, 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 of leadership, amen, is about to change now because another king has risen on the sea, amen. And along with the arising of a new kingdom, there is a new king. And then, and the majority of the time, when there is a new king, there is a new administration, there is new laws, there are new principles, and then there's a new idea, and then rarely do you find a king, and then when he replaces another king, and then that he continues the same type of rulership. He comes with his own assignment. He comes with his own agenda. He comes with his own message. Amen. So this morning, glory to God, we are not talking about a material kingdom or a political kingdom, but we are speaking this morning, I uh, praise God, about a spiritual kingdom. We're talking about the expansion, amen, of the kingdom of God. Jesus came with a totally different message than any other king that came before him. Even the message of David. David came in a, a glory to God, in a material or a physical kingdom. He was the king of a physical kingdom. David was symbolic of the king that was to come. The same manner how David uh, operated as far as his uh, worship and as, as far as his desire to please and as far as his him being after God's heart, Jesus came on the scene with the same uh, type of spirit on the inside of him. He wanted to make sure, hallelujah, he wanted to make sure that the kingdom of righteousness is established in the earth. That's why he told the disciples when he was teaching them how to pray. He said, you need to learn how to pray this way. Amen. Pray that the kingdom of heaven, pray God, that the will of the kingdom of heaven will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. The will of God, hallelujah, this is what he said, that the will of God be done on the earth as it is in heaven. And he said, I want you to begin to pray that the kingdom come. Understanding this, hallelujah, that he was talking about a material kingdom. A lot of times we want to equate the kingdom of heaven with material things. No, Jesus didn't come with that in mind. For that wasn't his priority. The priority, praise God, that when Jesus came introducing the kingdom of God, his priority was to 
make sure, praise God, that you know, hallelujah, that in order for you to be a part of this kingdom, glory be to God, you first have to repent. And if he's looking for citizens, praise God, that are willing, amen, to conform, glory be to God, to willing to conform to the principles of the kingdom of heaven. A lot of times, amen, we want to be a part of the kingdom, but we don't want to conform to the principles of the kingdom. And as long as you're trying to function, glory be to God, in the kingdom of God without conformity, amen, you will never be able to maximize yourself in the kingdom of God. I want you to understand today, amen, that repentance is a requirement in order for you to become a citizen, glory be to God, in the kingdom of God. John preached it, hallelujah. Jesus came on the scene, he preached it, praise God. The apostles were there when Jesus sent them out, amen, praise God. They began to preach the same message, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, the kingdom of heaven is not external. Amen. It's internal. Amen. The kingdom of heaven that Jesus, amen, was talking about is an internal, amen, expansion. Glory be to God. It's, it's a matter of the heart. The heart is acceptance. The heart of, is receptive to, amen, the domain or the dominion of the king, hallelujah, Praise be to God that now that has set up in your heart. Your heart now, praise God, it listen, it cannot function under the old administration. Amen. When you were in the kingdom of darkness, glory be to God, you were obedient to the king of darkness. Amen. I'm gonna say that again. When you were in uh, in the kingdom of darkness, hallelujah, you had to be obedient to the king of darkness. A lot of times, amen, even when you, when, uh, just like the Apostle Paul, he said, he, he, when, when I tried to do good, when I wanted to do good, evil was always present, amen. I wanted to do good, I tried to do good, hallelujah. But there was a dominion over me, there was a power over me that, hallelujah, that when I tried to do good, evil would override the good that I tried to do. Because, hallelujah, your flesh is accustomed to the kingdom of darkness. Your old man is accustomed to being dominated by the king of darkness. But when Jesus showed up, amen, he said, I'm, listen, listen, those that sat in darkness now, praise God, that they were sitting in darkness, now that a new kingdom has arrived, hallelujah, now light has under them, and now praise God, they no longer have to walk in darkness, but now they can walk in light. Yeah. So what the kingdom of, of uh, the kingdom of light does, it enlightens your heart to the principles of the kingdom of God. Yeah. The kingdom of light, praise God, it brings you illumination now. The things that you didn't see before, things that you weren't aware of before, now the kingdom of God or the kingdom of light, now you get some clarity on some things now. Now you understand, praise God, that I no longer have to be under the domain, hallelujah, of the king of darkness. I no longer have to reside. I no longer have to be a citizen of the kingdom of darkness. I can now become, hallelujah, I can transfer my citizenship, hallelujah, from darkness into light. Glory be. I'm going somewhere in this. Hallelujah. The kingdom of darkness now, hallelujah, has been overridden by the kingdom of light. Hallelujah. Now, praise God, I'm no longer under the old administration of darkness. Now I'm under the administration of light, hallelujah. And now that the king of light dwell on the inside of me, now he is showing me and letting me see who I really am. When I was in darkness, I couldn't see. I didn't know. I didn't understand. I couldn't comprehend, praise God, who and what I was created to be. But now that I'm in light, hallelujah, I'm being enlightened now by the spirit of the king of righteousness. Now, praise God, hallelujah, the unrighteousness that I used to carry that in my flesh. Now, because of the king, a new king has arisen on the inside of me. And now, praise God, that a new king has taken the position of king on my life. Now, glory be to God. He's speaking to me. He's talking to me. He's showing me. He's positioning me. He's directing me and redirecting me. Glory be to God. Now, he's telling me, boy, this is who you are. This is what you have been created for. This is what you have been created to be. Now, also, I didn't see that. Why? Because I was in darkness. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. But 
look at the name of the name. Under the new administration. administration. Yeah, I'm functioning now. I'm learning how to function now in this new administration. And if you look at praise God, Luke chapter number 17, I think it's verse number 21. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I think I need to read. Now, let me read that because I want to bring out something in this. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter number 17, verse number uh, 20 and 21. And listen to what he said. He said, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, Mean that the, that the Pharisees demanded and then a response from Jesus. When the kingdom of God should come, they answered him, when should the kingdom of God come? He answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Meaning that, amen, it's not anything that you can see with the natural eye. Meaning that, amen, it's not, it's not something that you can touch, amen. It's not a tangible kingdom. It's not a, uh, it's not a physical uh, kingdom, amen. He said, but it comes without observation. And this is what it said. He said, the kingdom of God comes not with observation, neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is where? It's in you. The kingdom of God is in you. Not only are you in the kingdom now, this is what I love about this, amen. not only are you in the kingdom, but the kingdom is now on the inside of you. Yeah. Now the power of the kingdom is on the inside of you. Yeah. Now the authority of the kingdom is on the inside of you. Yeah. Now the king of the kingdom, yeah. he's on the inside of you. Not only uh, are you in the kingdom, but the kingdom now is on the inside of you. Now, praise God, because the kingdom is on the inside of you, glory be to God, you yourself individually, hallelujah, not a corporate expansion, but I'm talking about you yourself as an individual, now you begin to expand. We're talking about kingdom expansion. Now God is beginning to expand you. Now he began to, amen, he began to show you and allow you to see, hallelujah, that you are not limited, hallelujah, by the trappings of the old man. He now began to show you, hallelujah, that you are in a kingdom where I want you to have dominion, where I want you to rule, I want you to represent the kingdom. You are a representative of the kingdom, and now I want you, amen, to begin to expand within. I promise you, glory be to God, if you begin to expand within, there is no way, hallelujah, that the world won't be able to see without. If you begin to expand, if God begin to expand your heart, if you begin to expand your vision, if he begin to, amen, to create, hallelujah, ideas, if he begin to, glory be to God, to give vision and dreams to you, and he begin to just put the word on your life and begin to tell you and talk to you about some things, hallelujah, there is no way, hallelujah, that people will not be able to see the expansion of the place in your life. Why? Because the ability of the kingdom within it causes you to expand inwardly and outwardly. It's causing you, amen, to do things, hallelujah, that you were not able to do prior to you coming into this new kingdom. God wants the kingdom to expand, first of all, internally. We're trying to, hallelujah, we're trying to expand outwardly. But God said, I want it to happen on the inside first. If you allow it to take place on the inside, oh my God, you will not have to worry about things on the outside because if I can rule on the inside, I don't it on the outside. He said, I just need you, hallelujah, to conform to what I'm telling you. 
Oh my God. People don't want to hear this. We don't get to pick and choose our assignment. I know that it's not popular, but you don't get to pick and choose what you want to do in the kingdom of God. No, you got to move by the assignment of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Just because I want to do a thing, I'm just going to arbitrarily get up and do it because I feel like doing it. God says, no. That's not, if it's not your assignment, then listen, you're out of order in the kingdom. And everything you try to do in your flesh, because that's what you want to do, it will never operate or function properly in the kingdom of God. Or it may look good on the outside. But in God's sight, you are a disobedient citizen in the kingdom. It may look good to me, but in God's sight, it's all the vain work. The kingdom of God. Expanding the kingdom. Look at the name of the neighbor. Are you about, Are you about kingdom, kingdom expansion? expansion. In the kingdom of life, Jesus was so he was so about kingdom expansion. He knew that he was just one man. He was the son of God, yet he was the son of man. And when he was on the earth, he operated as the son of man. And he was only one man and could only be in one place at one time. When we read in the book of, uh, I'm, I'm going to go back to that, but when we read uh, in, in, verses number 20, in verse number 25, it talks about uh, how the multitude followed him. How great multitude followed him and, and they went from Galilee, Decapolis, from Jerusalem and Judea and beyond the Jordan. It means, amen, that Jesus as a man, as an individual, without airplane, without automobile, amen, he was expanding the kingdom in these areas. When he was, as he was expanding the kingdom, he wasn't only preaching a message, but that message came with power and demonstration. See, as long as, glory to God, uh, I can bring a message of this new kingdom and try to overtake another kingdom. If all I got is words, if all I have is noise and no dunamis or no power, amen, to tear down and to uproot the existing authority, hallelujah, then all I got is noise. All I got is a method. But if I come in there with some power, Amen. if I come in there with some demonstration, yes. if it was, hallelujah, in the prior uh, kingdom where everybody was sick, when the people were sick and afflicted, hallelujah, and they were in bondage and in captivity, and I came with a method of liberty, yes. with a message of liberty, but no power to liberate those that have been held in captivity, then it's all I got is noise and no power. Amen. But when I show up in them with power and demonstration along with my message, amen. when I come in amen, and say to those that are sick and afflicted, be healed, take up your bed and walk, then I'm operating not just with a message, I'm operating now with power and demonstration. Amen. And when you listen up, when you begin to do things out of the ordinary, when you begin to do things that others haven't done before, when you begin to, people begin to see things, hallelujah, accompany your message, hallelujah, that they have never seen before, now they are beginning to take notice, hallelujah, that there's something different about this new, hallelujah, kingdom that's being introduced. There's something different now about the message, hallelujah. I know the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes, oh, they were very eloquent in their speech, hallelujah. They had a lot of things, they had a lot of laws, they had a lot of rituals, but I've never seen no power under this 
I'm the dead administration. I ain't never seen no one raised from the dead. I ain't never seen nobody healed. I ain't never seen no lame man walk. I ain't never had, hallelujah, saw somewhere no deaf man in, but open a blind eye made to see, hallelujah, or a deaf person, hallelujah, made to speak, hallelujah. But under yes, yes. this new administration, under this new kingdom, all we have seen, things that we have never seen before. Jesus came with power and demonstration. Amen. And I can promise you, glory be to God, where there is power and demonstration, Amen. you are bound to get expansion. Amen. Where there is power and demonstration, hallelujah, you are bound to get a following. Well, you say, well, Pastor, well, where are the people at today? I don't know where they are today in the sanctuary, but I can promise you from the day. Hallelujah. Until by the end of the week, look at the numbers. Why? Because somebody with a year and somebody believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, whether they are in the sanctuary or not, glory be to God. That's why I think I thank God for social media. Hallelujah. Because you can reach beyond, hallelujah, the sanctuary now. You can go beyond the four walls. People can sit in and listen. They may not ever come across the threshold. They may not ever in their senses. Sit in your congregation, but they can hear the message of the kingdom and they can believe the message of the kingdom. And listen, let me put this on hallelujah. Let me put this on here. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I thank God for the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is not limited, hallelujah, to a church. Amen. The Spirit of God is not limited to a building. The Spirit of God, hallelujah, it can go through, hallelujah, the airwaves, hallelujah. Wherever it's heard, the message of the kingdom of God, wherever received by faith, hallelujah, manifestation can take place right there and right there. Amen. I recall a time, glory be to God, we were on, we were on, uh, we were on the prayer line, hallelujah, and there was a young lady on the other hand, I praise God, she told in the prayer line, hallelujah, and she was dealing, hallelujah, with, amen, a diagnosis from the doctor, amen, about a mass that he saw in her left breast and in her, uh, in her lungs. She asked for prayer. We prayed. We believe God, hallelujah, that the mass would dissipate in her lungs and in her left breast. She went back to the doctor, hallelujah. The doctor went in and they did what they did, took the tissues that they wanted to take a look at. And they told her what was what. She went back again, hallelujah. And the next time she went back, hallelujah, they told her she was cancer free. Yeah. Didn't take any, didn't take any really radiation, didn't do no chemo, but a different, listen, a different king or a different power yeah. showed up on the scene. Yeah. And she received the message of the kingdom. That by the strength, this is the message now, that by the strength of Jesus, she was healed. Amen. She believed that by faith, and she was healed. Yeah. A couple of Sundays ago, Jesus. a young lady came up for prayer, had warts and everything went on. We prayed the prayer of faith over her. Yeah. The following week, they said, she said, yeah, on her on right arm, oh, I could see when she came up for prayer, they were like, not. On our arm, we prayed and we decreed over her and said to her, I'm going to watch and see the manifestation of God on your life. A Sunday or two afterwards, she came back, no warrants. God, God, the power of the kingdom of God override what it was that the enemy was trying to do yes. in her body. Amen. Kingdom expansion. Yes. What am I saying? Once you begin to operate, once you begin to learn the principles of the kingdom of God, God power, listen, it has to work through you. Yes. It has to work through you. You cannot be in the kingdom of God and you are obedient to the principles of the kingdom of God and don't have manifestation. Amen. It's impossible. Jesus. Because God will not be made alive. Amen. If you work the principles, Amen. the principles.
miracles will work for you. Yeah. In the kingdom of God. Yeah. Kingdom expansion. Yes. Jesus was operating in Galilee. Jerusalem. Decapolis. Judea. And in Syria. But like I stated earlier, he was only one man. He needed some assistance. The Bible that he told us 12 men in Mark chapter number 7. Mark chapter number, yeah, Mark chapter number 7, verse number 13. Kingdom expansion. It said, and he called the 12 and began to send them out two by two, and he gave them power and authority over unclean spirits. And if you go down a little further in that, amen, you will see, amen, that as they went about doing what Jesus told them to do, they began to expand the kingdom in different regions. They began, amen, to do the same thing that Jesus was doing, hallelujah, but they were doing it, hallelujah, under, under the authority of the king that gave them the power to do so. Why not go this in? I'm telling you this morning, amen, that what all oh, y'all go preach out on this and, and, and let this go beyond your normal way of thinking. The power that Jesus functioned in, you as a citizen of that kingdom, he now says, you have the power and the authority to do what I did. How can I give my hand on the sick and then we go, yes you can. If you have faith enough to believe it, you can do it. Well, I As long as you think, I don't know, you will never do it. You will never, as long as you think you can't do it, you will never do it. As long as you are not willing to put forth your hand, understand it or not, just be obedient to the prompting of the Spirit. You can do it. He has already been created over your life. He has already said it to you. Behold, I have given you power in this kingdom. Listen. In this kingdom, that's what I love about God. In this kingdom, he is not threatened by you functioning in authority in the kingdom. Because the power that you're operating under, you're operating under the power that has been given to you. Hallelujah. He, listen, listen, he loves it when you function like that. Because you are representing his kingdom. Look, you are taking territory on his behalf. You are recovering what your daddy lost. You are taking back territory in the spirit man. Hallelujah. I was just listening to something the other day about uh, this brother. He was talking about glory be to God, about the deep demonic spirits. Hallelujah. That's dwelling at, 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 over regions. And that's why you have seen so much Violence and the violence is increasing in the, in the nation and the, and the nations of this world. And then there was an intentional disturbance taking place among the nation and it's being uh, generated and orchestrated, glory be to God, by the forces that beyond that goes beyond the natural eye. That's why you've seen crimes now that's unexplainable. That's why you've seen things that's happening now or at such a rapid rate. Amen. Because what the enemy is doing, hallelujah, he is disturbing his listen, because we are sitting in silence. Oh my God. And religion has caused us, hallelujah, to, to, to be diluted in a sense, hallelujah. All we got now is operating with a message. But Jesus says, no, I need you to operate with power. Amen. The church has to get to the place, hallelujah, wherein they begin to operate with power. And now, praise God, hallelujah, because of the dysfunction that's taking place and the church is just sitting around talking about it, God said, no, I want you to begin to enter into spiritual warfare and begin to engage in that warfare. Amen. You have the power to override, hallelujah, 
the power of the enemy. And the devil, what he's doing now, you got those that in, in these uh, democracy, if you will, in the political arena, if you will, he had them so divided. He had them so confused. That they can't come up, they can't unify themselves to come up with laws that will benefit the people as far as the saving of people's lives with all of these gun laws. They can't even come up, praise God, with a bill to put before Congress that will right, they can put it in the law that will settle the issue with guns. I'm pro gun. You can have your gun. But I've never seen a gun walk off the shelf by itself and went about and shoot another person. No, someone had to grab that gun or whatever and pull the trigger on it to kill someone. It's not the weapon. It's the individual that's handling the weapon. And if they're being driven by that spirit that has control of their mind, then they're going to do just what, praise God, their mind is telling them because their mind is being controlled and dominated by the kingdom of darkness. So what the church has to do, the church has to pray, yes, pray for your government, but the church has to engage the kingdom of God, they have to engage in spiritual warfare and begin to pray and demand yes, sir. that the enemy bring this influence over the generations of this world. Amen. You, you think government going to solve the problem. Baby, they got more problems that they can handle Amen. themselves individually and collectively. Yes. And I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of the problems that we are having, they don't want them solved. Because it's all about industry and money. And they don't want to offend one industry too far, too much, amen, because they, mean, they can't get the kickbacks that they're accustomed to get. And a lot of things, amen, praise the Oh, I'm going, and I know I'm going this way, I'm going this way, I'm going this way. You got lobbies and lobbyists in Congress. Uh, listen, they are lobbying Congress just not just to be sure that certain bills are not passed just so hallelujah. They can continue in business and Congress, will, certain Congress or Congressmen or Representatives, they will oppose any change in the, in the system because if, and listen, if the changes take place, that means they can't get the kickbacks. That means they can't, they can't prosper themselves because going to vote against that or even I'm going to vote for that because if I vote for it, I know amen, they're going to enlarge me. Yeah. That's the kingdom of God. But in the kingdom of life, I put in God that this is not the case. In the kingdom of life or in the kingdom of God, listen, we have to. We have to operate on a different level. Our dependence has to be on God rather than on man. Our dependence has to be on our king to supply the need of the citizen of his kingdom rather than me having to try to make way for myself. Understanding what God said. He said, amen, I will supply your every need. I will supply for every need that you will have if people just adhere to my principles. Glory to God. The kingdom is expanding. Look at the name of your neighbor. It's expanding. It's expanding. It's expanding. It's expanding. It's expanding. In spite of what people say, it's expanding. Amen. How do you know it's expanding? Because it's expanding in me. Amen. It's expanding in me. Amen. I'm seeing it. I'm experiencing it. It's expanding in me. But whatever that you have, hallelujah. Listen, the manifestation, praise God, is this is in the seed form now. It's in seed form now. But I promise you, give it a little time. You're going to see, amen, some things falling up. Amen. 
Yes, in seed form, in seed form now. But I'm promising you, amen, in a day now, you're going to see manifestation of yeah. the labor. Amen. Manifestation yeah. of the kingdom is taking, taking place in my life. In my manifestation life. of the kingdom yeah. is taking yeah. place in my life. Yeah. I'm seeing manifestation taking place. But what do you mean? I don't think like I used to think. Amen. I don't do the things I used to do. Amen. Why? Because of different administration. Is there rulership in my life now? Yes. Things I used to say, I don't say that no more. Not that I was saying anything vulgar or profane, but the way, amen, the way I used to speak negative words over my own life, yes. I don't speak like that no more. Yes. I've learned now that I can speak, hallelujah, I can speak blessings over my life. I can speak blessings over my children's life. I can speak blessings over people like now. Now I have been given the power, amen, to speak blessings rather than curses. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Kingdom expansion. Yes. God will expand you. He want to increase you. Amen. He want to increase you. He wants you to understand and to know who you are and whose you are in the kingdom. You're not a distant relative. You're not a cousin. You know how to do, but you are a son or a daughter Amen. in the kingdom. Yes. You're not a stranger. You're not a foreigner. You are a citizen. And as a citizen, you have a right. You have rights in the kingdom. You have privilege in the kingdom. And in the kingdom, you are made free. In the kingdom. I asked my wife on last night and bring her to a close. I asked my wife on last night when I know I, I know what she was gonna say, but I needed to hear, I need to get some feedback. I said, when you first got saved, what was being said, what was being said to you about the kingdom of God? What did they say to you? What did they say to you? When you first got saved. That's how I phrase it. What did they say to you when you first got saved? Were you introduced to principles or were you introduced to rules and regulations? Were you introduced to kingdom principles or were you introduced to rules and regulations? I want you to ask that. Anyway. The majority of time when a new convert come into the kingdom, the first thing they begin to tell you, you can't do this, you can't do that. You can't go there, you can't go there. You can't say this, you can't say that. It's wrong for you to do this, it's wrong for you to do that. Regulations, restrictions, rules, laws. But you never taught me principles. Right. Mm -hmm. You were never taught kingdom principles. And if you if you can if you would just learn that the first introduction of the kingdom is kingdom principles, I can promise you, you're not going to have to tell me all the time about, about what I can and cannot do because there's some, there's going to be a creation on the inside of me to the point that I'm not, I'm not going to want to do these things. Because the principles of the kingdom is going to be working so for me. I don't want to have nothing to do with what used to be. All I'm concerned about what is and what is to come. Amen. I, see, see, that's why I'm repentance. If you can start teaching new converts, if we can start teaching new converts kingdom principles rather than rules and regulations, I promise you, you will begin to develop them inwardly. We're, we're more concerned about external things than internal things. As long as that person is not, listen, if they don't learn some, some kingdom precepts and concepts, they're going to continue to do what they used to do. 
Because there was no renewing of the mind. Your spirit is reborn. Brand new, breaking perfect spirit. But if your mind is not renewed by the word of God, man, you're going to continue to do the same thing you used to do and think you're okay. Because no one ever told you about the principles of the kingdom. Learn how to work the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. You, listen, if that person that was stealing, I'm going to stop. That person that was stealing, if they never, if they never learned I mean, inwardly from the spirit, learn that they no longer have to steal. They can have a born again spirit, but a confused mind, and they yet think, as long as I'm being committed, I got to thieve. I got to continue to do what I used to do. I just want to get, listen. We have been so bogged down, and the devil knows that I can bog them down in rituals, ceremonies, rules, and regulations. I can bog them down there. They never learn who they are and what they have been called to be and do in the kingdom of God. Stand in your feet. Hallelujah. Jesus said, Lord, and enlarge my territory. Enlarge me. In spite of what my name means, I'm not looking at what they call me, but I'm more concerned about who you call me and what you call me. I know that expansion is all on the inside of me. Expansion is on the inside of me. I may be restricted geographically, but on the inside of me, Lord, enlarge me. We're talking about enlargement or expansion on the inside. An increase of capacity. Enlarge my territory. Lord, enlarge my territory. And the king. I want to be more than just saved. I want to be more than just a church member. But I can see myself being more, doing more, having more in the kingdom. Enlarge my territory. Beyond the walls. See through some things. See over some things. See beneath some things. Enlarge me. Enlarge my territory. I know what they're saying. I know what they said. And it doesn't matter what they may say. But I know I need an enlargement. I need expansion in my life. I need expansion. They're trying to restrict me with their words. They're trying to hold me because now they think they have authority over me. The Lord, in the midst of what they are trying to do, I'm speaking to somebody. In the midst of what they are trying to do to me, Expand me. Enlarge me. Hallelujah. The shackles and the chains that they are trying to use to hold me, spiritual chains, mental chains, chains, emotional chains that they are trying to entangle me with. Help me, oh God, to just mature out of those things. Break the change. Help me to, to get too mature to the degree. Amen. That the change that they have on me, I just mature to the point that I'm breaking the restrictions that they have on me. In the name of Jesus, the burden that they are trying to inflict me with, 
have them on God to become so anointed and so all in the kingdom that it just rolled right off of me. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chains are being broken. The shackles are being loose. You got to receive this as I go. Chains are being broken. Shadows loose. Burn lifted. Hallelujah. Off of your mind, off of your emotions. Healing. Emotional healing, I speak now. It's taking place. Wounds and scars are being healed now. In the name of Jesus. The woman that I've just gone through abuse. On last night, yesterday. I speak healing to your emotions now. In the name of Jesus. You have been told that you're less than. I override that statement now in the name of Jesus. And I say to you, you are more than enough. In every situation, you are more than enough. Any man that tells you that, that the man that spoke to you and told you that you weren't enough, I override his words to you today and I say to you, you are more of a woman that he will ever be able to meet. You woman enough to satisfy every desire in that man, but he just don't know it yet. And in the name of Jesus, I speak to your self-esteem. The brokenness, the beat down, and say, you're not adding up. Saying that you're a disappointment. The devil is alive. He has disappointed himself. That he's blaming it on you. Hallelujah. Insecurities. Got you where you, amen. You are not certain about your own self. And I'm here to encourage you this morning. Be secure within yourself. Know who you are. Oh, woman of God. There is a lady. You feel worthless. I say to you this morning, you have great value. In Jesus' name. The brother that I've been torn down. You're not man enough for me. You're not enough. You're not like so and so. You don't do this like so and so. Let them know that you are not him. You are not the other man. But you are who you are. And the minute she began to say to you that you are not enough for her. Amen. Understand this, that you're more than enough. Don't you allow the weakness in another to cause you to be weak. You're strong. You're strong. You're master. You're king. Glory to God. You are a king, brother. In the kingdom of God, listen, you are not the king, but you are a sub-king. You are our, an ambassador of the king. You are not defeated. You do have what it takes. You can make it. You can do it. You will do it. You can overcome it. In the name 
name of Jesus. You can't have it. Don't you let go. Don't you turn loose. Your vision, it may, listen, it may be small now, but the Bible says, do not despise small beginning, brother. If you nourish what he placed in your hand, I'm speaking to somebody. If you would just nourish what he had placed in your hand, I promise you, it will grow and it will produce. In Jesus' name. Success has been ordained for you. Glory to God. Let's reach your hands out. I'm going. Hallelujah. 
face before me. It's yours. It's yours.
in areas that you were confined in, stretch out now. You got room to maneuver in the spirit. The chains have been broken. The restrictions have been removed.
what they would get. Lord, we thank you right now, oh God, that you bless them a hundredfold. Oh God, we thank you right now, oh God, for this place, this time that we have known ourselves to be able to be in, Lord. So God, as we pray right now, oh God, we thank you for everything that you have done for us in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sunday that 
We need to pray that the power of God just move, that this ground just be saturated with the Spirit of God from the outside to the inside. Amen? Amen. And I think those are all of my notes. Right. So we come in here this week Thursday or next week Thursday? Okay. So the Thursday before praise fest, August 4th, we are actually coming to the church for prayer at 7, at 7 o'clock p.m. So we want to ask all members to please be in attendance, pass the word, because Praise Fest is going to be an event where we're going to be all hands on deck. Everybody, from that Friday night on, we're going to be all hands on deck. And we want to thank God. The Lord is always blessing us and favoring us. We have a card machine yes. in the office. But, 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 the Lord laid it upon someone's heart to donate this wow. to the church. And we don't even know who the person is. But they donated this. So I was telling Pastor's office, I said, so what we have in our office that we pay it for monthly, honey, we send it back to the company. We are sending it back to the company. And this machine right here is so versatile because we have Wi-Fi. We can use it inside and outside. So we thank God for that. And can we just stand up and give God praise for Mr. Latron Robinson?
Priest, along with the children of First Lady Jenny L. Mitchell, is sponsoring a program in honor of her legacy of gospel music and youth ministry entitled The Legacy Continues. It will take place on this Saturday, which is also the one year anniversary of her transition. For decades, Sister Mitchell worked faithfully in the local community as an anointed yoke to join soul with and has served in local churches as the director of the youth department and youth wife for many years. She also served as an advisor and facilitator for the Wentzburg Equimensible Choir, a community youth choir that travels statewide. Many souls gave their lives to Christ and are still working in ministry this day because of her work, her work for Christ. The concert includes Jalisa McCray, national recording artist from Alabama, the Mitchellettes, Choir Boy Cam from Greenville, South Carolina, Lucrese, Sunny Best contestant Tiffany E. Andrews out of Houston, Texas, the Anointed Jackson Sisters, Samela Barr, Edwin Mitchell, Terrence Gamble, and Cabra Benford, and Psalm 100. And this will be on Saturday at 4 p.m. It's going to be at Lake City Pentecostal Holy Church, 608 South Promenade Boulevard, Lake City, South Carolina. It's free. Jerusalem United Methodist Church and her family and friends, they will be here on Sunday, August 21st at 3 p.m. Their team is friends and family uniting in worship. And the color this year, they actually want to wear yellow. The speaker for this occasion will be Reverend Ernest Ryerson, pastor of Friendship United Methodist Church in Neesmith. This is from Reverend Leon Thomas, family and friends, big chairperson, Reverend Franklin D. James, senior is the pastor. This comes from Old Paul Diner Restaurant. If you're looking for a Sunday meal, they have the menu posted. They have delicious items, yellow seasoned rice, white rice, barbecue rib, baked chicken, barbecue turkey wings, curry chicken, orange wings, smoked sauces with bell peppers and onions, green beans, black eyed peas, lima beans, collard beans, homemade dinner rolls, or soy desserts and drinks. If you don't have anything to do this afternoon or don't have your Sunday dinner cook, you can stop right there to get you a meal. Okay. These are all my friends. Amen. Oh, yes, and they gave a $20 donation to the church. Yeah, amen. 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 That's all of our announcements. Here's the clear. We ask everyone to please stand. Also, remember Zoom conference tomorrow at 7.